The Ridge Line is back. If you're one of the original 175,000 people who bought the first model, you'll be happy Honda made a second generation. I'm Clifford Atia with Car Gurus, and I've got one of the first 2017 Ridge Lines in the country. This is a fully loaded black edition. Now the Ridge Line is already a pretty unique car. It's kind of odd among pickup trucks. It's comfortable and it rides like a car. But how does it perform like a real truck? And is it really competitive against other mid-sized pickups? Let's take a ride. Unlike other pickups on the market, the Ridgeline comes one way. Front wheel drive, 3.5 liter V6, 280 horsepower, crew cab configuration with four full-size doors, and a one-size pickup bed that's five feet, four inches. The Ridgeline has a unibody construction. It's not a body-on-frame vehicle. And while it loses towing capacity and other ruggedness associated with that, the benefit is, of course, the car-like ride. Pickup trucks typically have a very rough ride especially when unladen, because they're designed for heavy loads. And as such, you know, when you don't have anything in the back, the ride can be kind of brittle, it shakes, vibrates. You don't really get that in this car at all. And if actually, if, if I didn't know this had a bed in the back, I would swear I'm in the Honda Pilot or any number of car-based crossovers on the market. So the Ridgeline has a conventional fold-down tailgate. you notice there's no hydraulic dampers here that slow the action down as it comes down. So it will slam if you're not careful. But what is cool, there's a second latch that lets the tailgate fold all the way outward on the left side. And that gets you full access to this entire bed. This is about five and a half feet long. Plus you have a lockable bed trunk, which Honda says can fit a full size golf club. Now there's also a spare tire and the jack right in here, plus a drain plug at the bottom in case all your ice and whatever else you got in here fills the container. Plus you can't see it here, there's actually a couple magnets that essentially use the bed as a resonator. There's no actual speaker, so it's weatherproof entirely. And from the inside of the truck, you can pump all the audio to the back. And it also is quite nice, because you have a 400 watt plug right here as well. There's no manual transmission offered on the Ridgeline. It's just one six-speed automatic transmission. And unlike the top trims of the Pilot, the nine-speed automatic is not available. Six-speed is designed by Honda, and it's a bit more robust. And even though there's less ratios, it still gets decent fuel economy. We've been averaging a little over 25 miles per gallon, mostly on the highway, which is pretty good. Now the Ridgeline is not as hardcore. There's no low range transfer case for the all wheel drive system. So you're really not gonna put it into too many rough spots. It also doesn't have as high of towing capacity as the competitors. Front wheel drive vehicles only do 3,500 pounds. All wheel drive like ours is 5,000 but you don't really want to approach that number with the Ridgeline because it's not really set up to do that. I was actually towing a car recently with it, going uphill, and it does chug a bit. Now you'll want a vehicle with more headroom, like 1,500 pounds more towing capacity to be really comfortable with a vehicle towing of that size. The top trims of the Ridgeline have better soundproofing. That means they put some acoustic lamination for the glass here, windshield, and also some more foam padding in the doors. You won't find that on the lower trims, especially the base models. The Ridgeline has an optional package called Honda Sensing. That's available on other Honda vehicles, including the Civic. It includes a whole bunch of things like autonomous braking, forward collision alert, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control. We also have blind spot monitoring as well. It's only available though on the top trim levels, like ours. The Black Edition is the top level. To be honest, it'd be really good if this system was offered on all versions of the Ridgeline, but that's not going to happen because there's still quite an expense involved with mounting all these sensors on the vehicle. The top trims of the Ridgeline also include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So overall, the infotainment system is pretty simple to use, it's pretty legible, and it works pretty quickly. The only issue, though, is that there's no hard buttons for the radio. So everything is touch sensitive here, that's not within the screen itself. And that means it's really difficult to actually like seek or you know, change the volume of the station without using the button on the steering wheel. The Honda Link system also lets you rearrange icons like iPad tablets, for example. You can hold your finger down and drag it. The navigation will also accept pinch and zoom gestures and swiping as well. So most pickup trucks of yore were always just really hard plastic, very basic stuff. You're not finding that really anywhere in the market, especially if you're gonna spend some extra cash. This one is even more like a car. Nothing is really too upright and, and really blocky here. It feels like you're in the pilot, which is almost exactly what you're in. Uh, there's a few more spaces here for, you know, for phones and other stuff like that. So it's a little more utilitarian. You got some more, you know, a lot more storage. 
but otherwise it's pretty much identical. Now our car has the optional touchscreen system here and it looks quite nice but it smudges quite a lot and having to constantly wipe it down with a terry cloth. Also in direct sunlight it'll wash out quite often. So it really would have been nice if there was a hood. A lot of manufacturers now are putting these screens really up top without integrating them into the dash and kind of makes it hard to use. The navigation here is actually a Garmin unit. It's not designed by Honda, so anyone using an aftermarket unit is going to get very comfortable with this map. It's got live traffic, rerouting, all the usual stuff, plus single string voice input, so that means you can enter a whole address without having to break up your voice. It's really convenient. 123 Main Street, Brockton, Massachusetts, done. It works very well. So in the back, there's quite a lot of leg room. You don't really feel cramped at all. There's a little extra space for your head there in the roof line. And what's really cool, just like the Honda Fit, the benches of the seats actually fold upward. And that means you have a complete flat loading floor in the back to stow pretty much anything. I just had my dog back there a day ago and he was comfortable. There is a little rail there because that's where the seat rails actually have to go down and latch onto it. So under the hood here is a 3.5 liter V6 engine, 280 horsepower, just gasoline, there's no diesel options available, and no four cylinder. Certainly wouldn't want that in this vehicle because it's about 4,500 pounds. But even with that weight, it moves pretty well. You know, I haven't really hauled anything just yet. I am going to get some bags of mulch, so we'll see how that goes. But it moves pretty well on the highway, scoops nicely, brakes are really confident, the brake feel is actually quite nice. It's not too soft, but it's really, again, I keep using the word car-like. That's what this vehicle is. It's a car, and you'd be really hard-pressed to know you're actually driving a pickup truck at any point. So when you're in the fully loaded Ridgeline, you get things like a heated steering wheel. We got the heated seats. Not cooled seats. The pilot gets that. But you also have a three-zone climate control, and it's kind of odd you would have that in a pickup truck. But the driver and the passenger can adjust those settings. Now, the folks sitting in the back can't actually adjust that. They've got vents right there in the center console, but they'll have to ask me if they want to change the temperature. Off-roading, there's more ground clearance in a Subaru Forester than a Ridgeline. This one only has eight inches of clearance, and so that's not really that much to do anything other than very light trail work. Still, there are four different modes for the all-wheel drive system that'll optimize it between sand and mud and snow, but this is not really the type of you know, hardcore system that off-roaders are looking for. However, though, on the road, there's a torque vectoring system that will transfer torque, engine torque, from one side of the wheel to the other. Um, that's a Honda thing that's been going on for quite a while, and what that does is it helps you power out of turns a lot better. It allows you to take sharper turns. And you wouldn't think you could do that in a pickup truck, but you can in this one. And it's all because of that torque vectoring axle. When you get off the line with this vehicle, it's quite good. You know, you don't really feel like you're straining or needing for more power. And even with the load in the back, it, it works pretty well. Um, like I said, you just don't want to be towing stuff that's up to that 5,000 pound limit. So if it's a couple jet skis, small motorcycles, a little boat, you'll be fine. But don't push it. You've reached the end of this video because you're probably not the traditional truck buyer. The Ridgeline can't tow, go off-road, or do any of the heavy jobs that most of the competition can do. But it's not a traditional vehicle. It drives like a car. It's really sumptuous, really nice inside, and loaded with a lot of technology you won't find elsewhere. If you're the type of person that just wants a tall car or SUV with an open bed, there's really nothing else in the market quite like the Ridgeline. For more details, check out my full review on cargurus.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.